Hi there, in this video I'm going to do a past exam question on differentiation. So let's take a look at this question. Question 2a, differentiate with respect to x and in part 1 of a we need to differentiate 3 sine squared x plus sec 2x. So let's see how this is done. Let's go to the paper and pen. So we need to differentiate 3 sine squared x plus sec 2x. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to let y and I'm going to let y equal sine squared x plus sec 2x. Now let me rewrite this as y is equal to 3 and sine squared x I can write as sine x to the power 2 plus the sec 2x term. And let's work out dy by dx. Now, to differentiate the first term, we can use the chain rule. And if you're unfamiliar in terms of how to differentiate a term such as this, I have created a video and I'll provide a link to that video explaining the method in the description below. So, to differentiate a term like this, and provided that the term in front of your bracket is a constant, and if you have a power, the idea is you first multiply by the power, so the power is 2, so when you multiply by the power, 2 times the 3 in front is 6, so it's 6 into sine x. Then you subtract 1 from the power, so it's 2 minus the 1, but then you need to multiply by d by dx or the derivative of the term within the brackets and the term within the brackets is sine x. So that is how you would differentiate the first term, 3 sine x to the power 2, plus, now we need to differentiate sec 2x. Now the derivative of sec is sec x tan x. So when you differentiate sec 2x, you're going to get sec 2x tan 2x. But you need to multiply by the derivative of 2x which is 2. So that is what you should have for when you differentiate sec 2x. Now let's simplify this. d by dx of sine x, when you differentiate sine x you get cos x. So let's make a note. So with this in mind, dy over dx is going to be 6 into cos x, so 6 cos x, with the sine x term and 2 minus 1 is a power 1, so we get 6 cos x sine x, or 6 sine x cos x for the first term when differentiated. Don't forget to add the 2 sec 2x tan 2x. So that is the solution to the first part, part 1 of A. So let's go back to the screenshot. So we have another one to differentiate. So in part two of A, we need to differentiate x plus ln 2x to the power three. So let's differentiate x plus ln 2x to the power three. Let's go to the paper and pen. Now, once again, the term in front of your bracket, so this term is a constant. And if you have a power, we need to use a chain rule again. So first of all, let me let y equal this term. So it's x plus ln 2x raised to the power 3. And let me repeat, if the term in front of your bracket is a constant, and if you have a power, you're going to be using the chain rule. So here's the chain rule again. To work out dy over dx, the derivative, we first multiply by the power. So the power is 3, so if you multiply by the power, you'll get 3 into x plus ln 2x to the power of. Remember the idea, just as when we differentiated this term in part 1, you need to subtract 1 from the power. So it's 3, taking a green pen, minus 1. So subtract 1 from the power, and then you need to multiply by the derivative of the term in the brackets. So the term in the brackets is x plus ln 2x. 
So let me write the x plus ln 2x here. Now let's do this. So let's call this star. Let's do this as a side calculation. So as a side calculation, let's work out d by dx of x plus ln 2x. So let's think about this derivative. So when I differentiate x, it's 1 plus. When you differentiate ln, it's 1 over. So it's 1 over 2x. But you need to multiply by the derivative of 2x being 2. And I can cancel these two 2's to give us an answer of 1 plus 1 over x. So that should be the derivative of this term over here. So let's make a note of that. So the derivative we calculated as 1 plus 1 over x. So let's keep that in a bracket. So let me continue over here. So to the main calculation, dy over dx is equal to, so I have 3, let me keep the 3 in front, 1 plus 1 over x, let me keep that term beside it, multiplied by, and we have x plus ln 2x, so x plus ln 2x, raised to the power 3 minus 1 being 2. So this should be the solution to part two of A. So let's go back to the screenshot so we have another part to do. So for part B, now given that y equals 5x squared minus 10x plus 9 all over x minus 1 squared, we need to show that dy over dx is minus 8 over x minus 1 cubed. So let's go over the process. Let's go back to the paper and pen. Since we have a quotient of functions, let's apply the quotient rule. And when it comes to the quotient rule, u is the denominator term, which is 5x squared minus 10x plus 9. v, on the other hand, is the term in the denominator, which reads x minus 1 squared. So let me write down the quotient rule. So by quotient, rule. So here's the rule. dy over dx. That is v du over dx minus u dv over dx all over v squared. Now if you're unfamiliar in terms of how to apply the quotient rule, I have created a video explaining the method along with additional examples and I'll provide a link to that video in the description below. Back to the example though, so in this case I need du over dx and dv over dx for this rule to be applied. So u is the numerator term which is 5x squared minus 10x plus 9. Now when I differentiate that, du over dx will be 10x minus 10. So that is what you should have for when you differentiate. And at the same time, let me take a common factor of 10 to leave me with x minus 1. So this is what you should get for du over dx. Now v, v is, so let me do another side calculation v is the denominator term, so v is x minus 1 squared. So let's think about the method that we need for dv over dx. Now once again the term in front of your bracket is a constant and you have a power so I can apply the chain rule. So I'm going to multiply by the power so 2 times the 1 in front is 2 so it's 2 into x minus 1 then we need to subtract 1 from the power, so it's 2 minus the 1. And then we need to multiply by the derivative, so d by dx of the term in the brackets, which is x minus 1. Now, d by dx of x minus 1, that is 1, for when you differentiate x minus 1. And with that being said, dv over dx... So let's simplify this. So we're going to have 2 into x minus 1 
to the power of 1, so 2 minus 1 is a 1 power, multiplied by 1 from this derivative should get, leave us with 2 into x minus 1. So that is dv over dx. Now, let's put this data into the quotient rule. Let's see what we'll get. So dy over dx is going to be, so in this case, we have v, v is, so let's input that x minus 1 squared, so that is v, times du over dx, and du over dx we have as 10 into x minus 1, so this, d, this is du over dx from here, minus du, so minus, and u, u is 5x squared minus 10x plus 9, multiplied by dv over dx, that being 2 into x minus 1, all over, so let's take a ruler, so all over v squared, and v is, so let's put that in here, x minus 1 squared, squared. So be really careful when you do the replacement. So let's try and simplify this. Let's try and tidy this up. So dy over dx is equal to, let me factorize. Let me factorize uh, the numerator. So let me take a red pen so that you're clear in terms of what I'm doing. And I have a two here, a number two here, and a number 10 over here. So with regards to the numbers, I'm gonna take a common factor of two and I have an x minus 1 term here, an x minus 1 squared term here, along with an x minus 1 term here, so that would be an x minus 1 cubed term when it's combined, and I have an x minus 1 term over here, so I'm going to take a, a common factor, so I'm going to include an x minus 1 as part of my common factor, since I've got an x minus 1 cubed but an x minus 1 term over here only. And let's see what we get. So this is my overall common factor. So what remains in this bracket? Let's think about. So since I have a number 2 which I've taken as a common factor, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So that's going to be left inside this bracket over here. Alongside with, now bearing in mind, x minus 1 squared times an x minus 1 is an x minus 1 cubed but since I've taken x minus 1 as a common factor I'm left with an x minus 1 squared from the first term minus, so minus I've taken out 2 into x minus 1 as a common factor so we'll forget about this term since that's been taken out so I'm left with this quadratic term, which is 5x squared minus 10x plus 9. So that's what I should have in the bracket as a result of taking this as a common factor. But we need to divide by, so all of this is divided by, and x minus 1 squared to the power 2 is x minus 1 to the power 4. Now, by doing this, I can cancel this x minus 1 with one of these x minus 1s below, giving me a power of 3, okay, as a result in the denominator term. So, let me, let's tidy this up. So, let me tidy this up. So, we've got dy over dx, that is equal to 2, which remains outside. And if we multiply this, so we have 5 in 2 x minus 1 squared, so when you multiply, you're going to have x squared minus 2x plus 1. So this is the expansion for this term, x minus 1 squared. And minus times 5x squared is minus 5x squared. Minus times minus 10x is plus 10x. Minus times plus 9 is minus 9 all divided by the x minus 1 cubed below, so x minus 1 cubed below. So let's continue, so dy over dx is equal to, 
So it's a two opener bracket. Now if I get rid of the brackets here within this square bracket, five times x squared is five x squared. Five times minus two x is minus 10 x. Five times plus one is plus five. Minus the five x squared plus the 10 x minus the nine. So this is what you should have as a result of multiplying these two terms. So all over the x minus one cubed term below. Now, as you can see, terms can cancel within this bracket. So I can cancel the five x squared with the minus five x squared. And also I can cancel the minus 10 x with the plus 10 x. So what do we have as a result? So we have these terms remaining, the five minus the nine, five minus nine is minus four, minus four into two is minus eight. So we're gonna be remaining with the minus eight over x minus one cubed. So as you can see, this corresponds to what they want as part of the question. There's a fair amount of maths involved with this calculation. Take care when it comes to the expansion and the simplification involved. So that ends that part and that ends the video sadly. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did enjoy the video, a like is very much appreciated. Do plenty of practice related problems and I hope to see you again. Thank you.